theyeshiva.net. Good morning, everybody. Baruchim Abayim. Especially to all of the new faces that are here today, who are here today. Ponam Chadashus. And of course, to all the regular faces who are here today. Also Ponam Chadashus. Anayitag. Hamachadish Betuve Bechol Yom Tamet. Yet the tug is Anayitag. Ponam Chadashus Baolikan. Okay. We're going to learn a piece of the beer on page uh, Shlach Mem Gimel, Mem Gimel, page 85. On top, I should say Shlach. We will learn the Maime Vayyu Bnei Yisrael Bamidbar Vayimtsu Ish Mekoshe Sheitzim. He focuses on the Zohar, that he compared the trees, Eitz Achayim, Eitz Adas, Eitzim, plural, Lashen Rabbim, which one is greater. At the end, we have the Ktsas Beer. Now, it's interesting, it says Ktsas Beer. Sometimes they'll say Beer. Here it says Ktsas Beer. The reason is because the Balatanya would say my marim almost every Shabbos, Yom Tif, sometimes in the middle of the week. And then often, the next Shabbos or during the week, in the middle of the week, he would say what's called a Beer, an explanation on the Maimer. The Beer was usually more complex and referencing all the ideas back to the Mucker like showing how it was developed, more the methodology, where it originated, how he developed it, from, from Narizal, or from Kabbalah, from Medrashim, or Chazal, it was more uh, referencing everything back to, back to the source, sometimes being mefalpal in a certain idea, so it's usually more complex. Sometimes there's a beer libir, a beer on the beer. So it gives more perspective to the Maimah. This Maimah is brief and cryptic. It's hard to understand, not everything the... the the knot that some of the knots at the end, as they say, stay loose. So that's why it says, where a lot of more things come into perspective. The first column, we're going to learn in the second column. The first column is a lot of ideas from Kabbalah, which goes back to the sugya of Eisen Ritzayin Rishal Makim. The Gemara asks in Brachas, Lamed Hey, he learnt, we learned in the beginning of the Maimer, contradiction. You will do the grain yourself. You'll gather the grain. Yeshaya says, other people will do for it, will do for will do it for you. So the Gemara distinguishes if if they're doing Hashem's will or not. The Gemara brings that Rabshim by Yechai said that uh, Vasaf to the Gancha Vasirach Vitzarech, if everybody is, as he puts it, Adam Chayrish Bashaz Chrisha, Adam Zare Bashaz Ria. If you plant, if you plow during the time of plowing and you, you plant during the time of planting and you harvest during the time of harvesting, Torah Matahela. You gather the grain yourself, what's going to be with Torah? So Rajbi says, therefore, it's only if a nice and Ritzainer shall muck. If they're not doing the Hashem's will, if they're doing Hashem's will, then. They don't have to do the plowing and the planting. Rabbi Shmuel argued with Hashem ben Yechai. He said, no, Hanag ben Minig Derech Eretz. You have to be able to work. The Gemara finishes there famously, Har be'yasu ker Rabbi Shmuel ben Yechai v'loy also be'yadon. Har be'yasu ker Rabbi Shmuel v'also be'yadon. Abayah says many people followed Rabbi Shmuel ben Yechai and it didn't work for them. In other words, they neglected work and they said, God will do everything. I'm just going to sit and learn. And many did like Rabbi Shmuel. The majority and it it worked. Harbe. The question is, so Rabbi Shimon Yechai says, I it says Vasafta the Gan. He says that's if Einois in Ritzayin Shal Makim. And then you have the big question the Maimer raises. That's called Einois in Ritzayin Shal Makim when it's a reward for him. Shamoya Tishmo Mitzvos Hashem Noichim Mitzav Eschem Ayoyim Laavas Hashem Alekechem Laavdei Bechol Levarchem Bechol Namshachem. If that's not doing God's will, what is a Ritzayin Shal Makim? So he said the distinction is Bechal Maidecha. The first parish of Kriya Shema says Bechal Levavcha, Bechal Namshcha, Bechal Maidecha. The second parish doesn't say Bechal Maidecha. That's the key. Which means Ein Eisen Ritzen Shal Makam doesn't mean literally they're not doing God's will. It means, because you're listening to all of his mitzvahs, you, it's even not only robotically, La'avah, there's love and there's service. Bechal Levavcha with your whole heart. Or Bechal Namshcha with your whole soul. <laughs> That's not exactly uh, alienation or distance. 
But the Nekud of Oysin Ritzoyne Shalmakam is missing because there's missing the Bechal Maidach. What's the explanation in this? So he says, you have to understand it on a much deeper, much, much more deep and subtle level. Sometimes the Gemara says, Ain Oysin Ritzoyne Shalmakam. If you look from a superficial point of view, they're not doing Hashem's will. But it can't, doesn't make sense here. So that's why he's, the Masha already asks this question. So that's why the Balatanya says, and as I said, in another place, he says that he heard it from his Rebbe, from the Magad, that the difference is Bechal Ma'idcha. Why would the Gemara then use this expression, Ein Oysin Ritzayin Ashal Makim? Ein Oysin Ritzayin Ashal Makim. Yeah. So Oysin Ritzayin Ashal Makim means two things. Literally, we translate it as doing God's will. But real, the literal, literal translation is Oysin, they make Ritzayin Ashal Makim. They create the Ratzin of the Makim. Ain oisin ritzayin shal makam. It's not they don't do the will. They don't make oisin is really mice to create to do like la asos to do. Ain oisin ritzayin shal makam or oisin is they make they create ritzayin shal makam. Makam is place space. Ratzayin is desire. So he says there's an avet Hashem that is bechal avavcha bechal nafshecha, which is basically a love to self. And the soul has so many different aspects. And when a person realizes that that soul and all of its aspects is just divine electricity, so the love of self is really a love of God. And the love of God is a love of self, a love of the true self. That's the Avarud and Amalek that we spoke about at length in the Shurim on the Maimer. That Ava, which is the basis of what Moshe says, La'ava Hashem Alekecha, Ki Hu Chayecha. It's rooted in the love to chayecha, to my life, which we have. A, a person has a love to their own life. They'll do anything to live. They'll do crazy things to live. They'll give up everything that they worked for their whole life to be able to live, sometimes just a couple of years or a couple of months or even less, or a couple of weeks, even a couple of hours. The, the value of life trumps everything else, and for obvious reasons, because without life, there's no other. That's it in, in terms of Elam Hazel. So therefore, that love is the love of Bechal of Avcha, Bechal Navshech. It's all aspects of your heart. It's all aspects of your soul. The soul doesn't have one dimension. Every aspect of the body is another manifestation of the soul. As he puts it, there's Kaya Chazan from the Rambam. There's Kaya Chazan and Kaya Chama'akal and Kaya Chadoicha. You know, we have nine systems in the organism. Each one is another brilliant manifestation of the of the spiritual mechanism of the body, the, the, the soul behind the mechanism of the body. So the Ava literally is Bechol Nafshech, as he puts it in all aspects of Nafshech. That's all rooted in Makayim, in space. Mamalek Halalman, which is about space. It creates space, it's about space, it's about the divine energy that's manifested in space. Oysin Ritzayinu Shal Makayim is the different Ava. It's the Ava that comes later, deeper. Bechol Ma'aydecha. Ma'aydecha means with your veriness, with that which is beyond the self, beyond you. That's the Ava that's rooted in the Neshama's connection with the essence that is beyond and transcends the condensing of the energy in Dibur and creation, what's called Saiv of Kalam. What's then the connection to the Vasafta, the Ganecha, versus Va'amdu Zarim Virot Sainam? Right? So that's sort of the few lines I want to learn. I gave this Hakdama and then go to onto the Makaisha. So if you'll take a look in the beer. I'm skipping the first part of the beer because it's, it's just very, very mystical and complex and it needs a hundred introductions. And I want to get it to the Nakuda. Um, if you go to the Ktsas beer, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten lines, ten lines from the bottom. The line starts, Bishar Shehigdimu. Yeah. So he says, Shahu Bechal Ma'idcha. Right before, there's a long parenthesis. Before the parenthesis, he says, Right before the rent, the line starts, David. You see, Binyan David Shavira. You can have love with the whole soul. Which is Ratzon beyond the Makam. After the parenthesis, Shahu Bechol Ma'idrecha. Bechol Avavcha, Bechol Navshcha, Bechol Medacha. Velachain Namagabi Bechinis, Bechol Navshcha, and Vasafta de Gancha. That's the diok, you'll gather your grain. It's not just the difference who will do it, you or you're going to have somebody that you pay and you have all the money or, or you have artificial intelligence doing it. 
the Nekudas Vasafta, Machmas Shuadayim Bezu Amadrega Lahalas Nitsutsin Kadishin Hamifuzarim, Be Asik Masa Matno Bechrisho Bezriya. The Diak is Vasafta. What's Vasafta? You gather together. What do you have to gather? Things that are scattered. Why do you have to, why are they scattered? In other words, it's a consciousness, it's a state of consciousness. It's not if the person is physically in the field or not. It's a state where I have to gather everything together because I'm in a place where I'm elevating sparks, what we call avayda sabirurim, that are scattered. Whether it's in business or whether if you're a farmer, it's plowing and planting. There's already matan. Not everybody were farmers. There was already something merchants, business people. Not everybody sitting in this room are farmers. Even though we're in Rockland County, it's farmland, but slowly uh, the Jews are making from farms uh, real estate. So there's two in Yonim, but, but the common denominator is that the Nitsutsis, there's Nitsutsis everywhere, there's, and things are scattered, it's all scattered. You need Vasafta the Gancha to bring it together, to gather it. That's in the consciousness of Mamala Kalalman, where there is fragmentation and diversity. It has to be aligned with the source, and it could be disaligned. You want to go out of Makkim to the place of Which is beyond the bitter of of uh, of Nitzutzis. And uh, uh, a few lines later, Mem Gimelam column two, four lines from the top, Miuzela Asid, the main thing of this is in the future. Avalano Akshav Kaimel and Kirabi Shmal Domer Hanak Ben Minig Derech Heretz. The Allah says that now, the Allah is like Rabbi Shmal, that what? That the Torah does want a person, Minig Derech Heretz means to be able to do the way of the land. In other words, to go make a Kali and Teva for your Parnasa. Besides, of course, those who are connected to the Derech of Rajbi. The Pasuk says, or you have to gather by Sukkot, it says. In other words, that yes, there is a the state of Birurim where I am in a state where the things are scattered, which is the consciousness where there's mixtures of things, and I have to find the sparks, I have to find the godliness because I can easily end up also in the debris and in the rubble, and that's the avoid of being mavara, which is Eitz Adas versus Eitz Achaya. V'ha b'chaya, Rabbeinu b'chaya, hiksha loshen m'koshesh. Da hava lemei mar malaket. Rabbeinu b'chaya, or some people call him Rabbeinu b'chaya, in his commentary on Parsha Shlach, asks why the Torah uses this enigmatic word m'koshesh. It could have used the word by the man. It says, They'll gather according to the many interpretations. That he was gathering, like the Gemara brings in Shabbos, Ma'amer, and the Targum Unkula says, Megavev, he was gathering wood. That was the problem. He made piles. So why does the Torah have to use this strange word, Mekoshish, and then you have to ding what Mekoshish means. Does it mean uproot? Does it mean walk around and carry? Does it mean make piles? It's not an easy word to understand. It's connected to kash, which is straw. We spoke about Mitzrayim, lekoshish, kash letevin, lekoshish. Yeah, what, 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 why the word mekoshish? Say malakit. It's not like malakit is not a word used in Chumash. It's used the word. We have in the Nevu also of atom to look to echad echad. But you have already by the man, velaktu, their malakit, they gathered. Velachain pidir, so Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar says, sheroim the word mekoshish means something else. <laughs> Here comes a new interpretation. What's Mikoshish? Mikav Sheish. <laughs> Mikoshish is two words. Mem Kuvav Sheish. You know what ka- Mikav is? From a line. From the line of six. They found the person in the desert. He was Mikoshish Eitzim. Mikav Sheish. Doesn't say Kav Sheish. Mikav In other words, he came from the line of six. That's what he says. 
שהפריד בעניין שישה קצובה סל יוינה, שהם השישה מידה סל יוינה זכולי אין שם. This means, רבינו בחייה says, that he separated something connected to the six מידה. He came out, מי קו שש. He separated himself or something from the line, from the structure of the six מידה, known as שישה קצובה סל יוינה, which are the six supernal dimensions. Ktsavis means dimensions, right? You have Mizrach Mairev Dorim Tsofen, east, west, south, and north, and then up and down, Maila Mata. So, but we're not talking here about the physical dimensions. We're talking about spiritual, El Yoinim, spiritual dimensions. The six sides, Mizrach Mairev Dorim Tsofen, Maila Mata, are rooted in the six middas, Chesed, Gvura, Tiferes, Netzach, Hoid, and Yisoit. Dorim is, Dorim South is connected to Chesed. This is brought at length in the Pardus. Dorim is Chesed. And Safoin is, uh, is Gvura. And then you have Tiferes, you have Mizrach. You have Maila, you have Mata. So all the four, six dimensions are connected to the Shishak Tzavas. So he separated himself from this, which are the six Midas al Ainsham. Now the connection, fine. So we have a new Taichin Makoshish. <laughs> Mikavshesh, Vaz, Vu, Ven. How does this come into the whole story? So that explains everything. That explains everything. Very well. So now you'll see how it explains everything. V'yesh levayr dvodav. You could explain his words. Al pima shamru razal. Based on a Gemara, Perik test, the Shabbos, Dav Peitesa Meralaf. Now in this beer, you see, you get a little taste of the interconnectedness of Torah. Literally, the interconnectedness of so many different fields and realms by showing that inner, inner soul, that inner thread that pervades it and brings so many what would seem disparate things, disconnected things together. So says, the Gemara says in Mesech Shabbos, al ki boishish moishah. <laughs> you know, before we got into this, I'm going to tell you a little story that's no one in the Hasidic world. It's just a little story and you'll hold on to it. Just hold on to it. Two of the great Hasidic masters was the Holy Rabbi Sral of Rizhin, the Heliki Rizhin. Eh? Sral of Rizhin was a grandson, Rabbi Avram HaMalach, who was the son of the Magad of Mizrich. And uh, Rabbi Avram Yeshua Heschel of Apta. He's known as the Oy of Yisrael, the Heliki Apta of Apta is a city in Poland. And uh, he's buried actually in Mezhebush, where he was at the end of his life, in the Ukraine near the Balshemtiv, in the oil of the Balshemtiv that they built today, because it was destroyed by the war. But today they built uh, recently, in the last few decades, the new oil, Rabbi Gabai. Some of you were there, Dachzach. And uh, so the Apterov, he's known as the Oyev Yisrael, because his commentary on Chumash is called Oyev Yisrael. And he was known for his, his love of the Jewish people. And him and the, the, the helicopter of and the helikirushin of Israel of Rishon were sitting together for a Sudas Rishchodesh, Rishchodesh Tammuz. It was Rishchodesh Tammuz, and they had together a meal for Rishchodesh. So the Rishon asked the Apterov if he can bring, if he can bring uh, six bottles of wine, and he's going to bring seven bottles of wine. That's what he asked. He's going to bring six. He's going to bring seven. So, so he did. So they did. And that's what happened. One brought, one brought six bottles of wine. One of them brought seven bottles of wine. That's the end of the story. It's a known story. And the oil was very surprised what was, what was going on. It was six bottles, seven bottles. You bring one number. I bring another number. What it, what it means. During the meal, during the Suda, the Apterov spoke. And he explained what the Rishon asked from him with the six and seven. And he quoted this Gemara, this Gemara, that we're going to quote now. What's the Gemara? It says, by the Chet HaEgel in Parshas Kisisa, Vayar Ha'om Ki Boishish Moshe. Boishish Moshe Laredes Menahar. Literally, it means the nation saw what's boishish. 
Anybody knows Boishish? You have Midbashesh, huh? So that's, so, so, but, but here it doesn't make sense. They saw that Moshe is Boishish to come down from the mountain. So it's hard to understand the word Boishish. But, but it doesn't make sense here in Baris. They saw that Moshe is not coming down from the mountain, huh? Oh, say it good. Say it good. <laughs> so it's a Gemara in Shabbos, and Rashi brings it. Vayaram ki Boishish Moshe. So the Targum says Boishish also means delayed, like per, like procrastinated, like something is being delayed. It's it's ki boishish moishe. He's not coming down from the mountain. It's being delayed. Rashi says lashon ichor. He's late. Boishish richbo. It says by Sisra, his mother saw that the chariot is he's not coming home, so she started to cry. Sisra's mother. That's why we blow shayf a hundred times, right? Vayachilu ad boish. Boish means delayed. Fine. And now she explains what happened. Nagan Samaisa. He told them after Shavu, after Matan Torah, he's going up for 40 days, right? At the end of 40 days, I'm going to come down, as Rashi puts it, betoich shei shoyus. I'm going to come down within six hours from the morning. That means, just for argument's sake, if sun rises at six, I'll be there before 12. I'll be there between 11, betoich shei shoyus. Right, the beginning of the sixth hour is 11. The end of the sixth hour is 12. 12.01 starts the seventh hour. Don't worry, I'll be there. Be, by noon, I'm there. By midday, I'm no Before midday, betoich shei shayas. Some versions in the Gemara is betchilas shei shayas. I'll be there. I'll be there after the beginning of the six hours. The point is between between twelve and one, I'll be there. Of course, he's not there. He's not there. He's not coming down. That's the boishish mosh. And Rashi says that they made a cheshbon that he's supposed to come a day earlier because they counted the day that he went up on the mountain. That was the first day. So the 40th day for them was a day early, but really he needed still another night because he needed full days of 24 hours. And the day that he went was missing, even if he went up in the morning, he was missing 12 hours. So he needed to wait another night and then come down the next morning, right, before six hours. So, so they, made, they made this delay in the So they're waiting six hours. Moshe said he's coming. He's not coming. That's what happens. He comes down. He's supposed to come down the 17th of Tammuz. They're expecting him to come down the 16th of Tammuz. Rashi makes the cheshbon because they were a day off. On the 16th of Tammuz, they conclude that Moshe died. Mace Moshe. And that's it. Why? Because bo she shoyz veloy ba. Six hours passed and he never came. That's ki boishish. Boishish is ba sheish. The sixth hour has come and gone. In other words, it's already 12 o'clock, 12.05, 12.30, 1 o'clock. As they put it, they come and they say, We don't know what happened to Moshe the man. To Moshe the man. Rashi says, don't think it was just a mistake of a cloudy day meaning it was cloudy. They assumed it's already 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Really, it was 11 o'clock. If you don't have a clock, right, you look up. So if it's a clear day, you could see where the sun is. So you understand it's morning, it's not afternoon. But if it was cloudy, you don't see where the sun is. Maybe they made that mistake. He says, that can't be because Moshe never came down that day. If he would have come down that day an hour later, you could say they made a mistake because it was a cloudy day. He came down only the next day. That means the mistake was not an hour or two off. The mistake was the very day. So that's what the Gemara says, ki boishish moishah, that the whole thing happened, bo she shoyis v'loy bo. That's where chet Eagle happens. That's how it happens. U berabbas ki sisa perek mamalav kufnon vav beiz, u beparshas balois chakadav l'saif parshasenu, Karav Lasaif Parsha in Medrash Rabba. The Medrash says about a Shisha Shoyas Vyoiser Velo Yarad. The Jews said six hours have passed, and even more. We waited a little bit and he did not come down. He's never coming down. The way you learn in Al Pipshat is it's just a technical thing. In other words, he said, I'm coming down by the end of six hours. And he didn't. So a male it's Bashish. Bashesh and not. (laughs) 
comes the Zohar, the Tikkun Zohar, and says, <coughs> Tammuz, Tammuz, when this all happened, this happened, Shivasa Tammuz, he broke the Luchas when he came down. It's one of the, the Mishnah says five reasons we fast. The first reason is because he broke the Nishtabra Luchas. That's the first reason, Shivasa Tammuz. Later, there were other things, Shivasa Tammuz, including, of course, the breaching of the walls of Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar or by Rome. But, uh, the first thing is that luchas were broken. So it says in Zohar, Tammuz is a combination. It says in Yerushalmi that Shmoy Sachadoshim Olubi The names of the month are not found in, in Torah. You don't find Nisan, Iyer, Sivan, Tammuz. It's always first month, second month, third month. The names of the month the Jews brought back from Bavel. It's a very interesting thing. That's a tradition that comes to Judaism later. Nisan, Iyer, Sivan, Tammuz. Which means they're not really Jewish names. Their names that they bring back from Babylonia. Right? For example, Tammuz was a name of, Yecheskel says it was a name of an idol. Nashim Mavaka says it was a funny, funny type of idol called Tammuz. Agansa Maisa. Tam, but the Jews took the names. So the names have a lot in them. They're not, they took them. So one of the hints in Tammuz is Tam Vav Zion. Tam means finished complete and tam, like tom v'nishlam, right, finished, or whole, in other words, you're done, so it's whole, tam, tam vav zayin, finished is the problem of six and seven, which issue, what's connection to tamos, oh, this is what happened, Moshe was supposed to come down by the end of six hours, he didn't, and this created a major korban, tam vav zayin, and the Zoya says that's why, when does the Torah say you have to burn chametz? Tashbisu, the beginning of the seventh hour. Because that's when all the problems began. The beginning of the seventh hour, 12 o'clock p.m., that's when it began. Because boish, boishish. So that's why you have to burn chametz, tashbisu, ach marishin. So the Gemara learns it out in Psachim, Dav, hey, we learned it, ach, chileg, that you learn out that in the middle of the day you have to get rid of the chametz. When is the middle of the day? Chatzos. Why? Because that's the time of the Chet HaEgel. That's when the, the rumors began. Moshe is not here. We need a new Moshe. And they make a calf. The Chachamim pushed it back an hour earlier. Right? Sorfin betchilas sheish. We don't burn the chametz at 12. Burn the chametz at 11. Or whatever the right time is. Depends on the calendar. Depends on the time of the year. But it's an hour earlier. Tchilas sheish. In other words, already in the beginning of the sixth hour. Because Moshe said he's coming in the middle of the sixth hour. In other words, after 11. Betchilas Sheish, or Betoich Sheish. There's two versions. So already Betchilas Sheish, they're already waiting and he's not there. And that's the source of the Chomets, which is connected to the Eagle. So that's why the Chachamim said, go back even earlier and burn the Chomets Betchilas Sheish. So the Apterov said, that's why the Ruzhina wanted six bottles and seven bottles. One for the six hours and one for the seven hour, for the seventh hour, which begins at the end of six hours, because it's Rishchaitish Tamuz and he wants Tam Vav Zion. Okay, so the question now is, where did the, where did the Zoyar and the Sifri HaKabbalah turn a technical thing into a Gans of Maisa? Comes the Rabbeinu Bechai and says, the Mekoshish, he went out, Mikav Sheish, he left the six. So what's the Hasbar in all of this? So the explanation is as follows. Ah? So, so we'll see in a moment. We'll see in a moment. So the key that we have to understand here is, what's the difference between six and seven? We have the seven days of the week. The seventh day, of course, is Shabbos. The six days of the week. We also have as Rabbi Nebuchadnezzar brings, and it's one of the fundamental ideas in Kabbalah, that there are six middas, Chesed, Gvurit, Teferis, Netzach, Hoid, Yisoyed, and the seventh one is Malchus. During Sphere Sayyim, right, we go through the six, seven middas from Chesed, Shabbat Chesed, all the way to Malchus, Shabbat Malchus. But there's a big difference between Chesed through Yisoyed and Malchus. And that is, Malchus represents what's known in this Maimah's Lashon, as the Koyach of Mamalek Alman. What is a Melech? The, the definition of a Melech is a king. But I think a better title for our context is a leader. Malchus is leadership. 
The real definition of leadership is not that you're a leader, but that you're there for the people. That's why when we say the word king, when we hear the word king, we just think about crazy dictators who build huge palaces and hermitages so they could live comfortably. But the real malchus is that my focus is not me. A real leader means you're completely in tune with the needs of your people. Like Moshe Rabbeinu tells Hashem, right? I'm not going to be here. Yifkod Hashem. What's it mean a man with ruach? With spirit. Every person has spirit. Ruach means he can relate to everybody's individual spirit. That's a leader. A real leader doesn't bring people, doesn't replicate people in his image. That's not the point of a leader. That's a different, that's that real, real leadership is he can relate to the spirit of each person. How? Because he has a little piece of every person in himself. If not, you can't relate. That's the retza, it's, it's called in, by in Kabbalah, neshama klolis, a collective neshama. In other words, there's a piece of every neshama in my neshama. Now we all connected, but by a leader it's a very visible. So there's no Jew that he looks at him and he says, you're not shayach to me, I, I can't deal with you. <laughs> you know, I have no time for you, I have no space for you in my brain. It would be like a brain. The pinky is hurting, so the pinky comes to the brain, help me. I mean, no, 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 I don't have time with pinkies like you. Somebody else's pinky, yeah, but my pinky, it, if you're a brain, every part of the body is connected to you. If you're not a brain, then not. If you're, if you're a real brain, if you're doing your job and you're a real brain, there's no nekud in the body that you disassociate from. Unless it's a very unhealthy situation, of course. Or the brain is damaged, right? But uh, th- then the brain says, uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not functioning. But the functioning brain encompasses every nikud of the body. So malchus is that which is relatable to the people. It leads the people. We say, ein melech beloy am. What does malchus represent by Hashem? It's the quality of the divine that relates and sustains and is enclosed and manifested within the otherness of creation. Chesed gvur teferes netzachoyd yisoyd. You can all have by yourself. A person could sit on a mountain and wax eloquent and write poetry about love. You don't actually need the other person. Malchus, you can't be a leader on a mountain. You can't be a leader in theory. That's not leadership. The entire experience of Malchus only happens in relationship with somebody else. A similar example would be to marriage. You can't be married conceptually. It's, it's not that you don't have it. Other middas, you can have the middha inside of you, even if it's not expressed with other people. But Malchus, ein melech beloyam, you need the actual am. It's like a, a person, you'll be married to yourself. In theory, you're married. It, the whole experience of marriage is the feedback. It's the relationship with another. It's the it's the colli- it's the mer- the colliding or the, rather the merging of two people and the relationship that creates the dynamic. Huh? The kinegda, yeah. The, you ba- you bounce off each other. So malchus also. That's what malchus is. Malchus is isha, femininity. Huh? Of course. But, 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 but the mid of Malchus can only be aroused and experienced within yourself in your relationship with the other. And as long as that doesn't exist, the, the mid of Malchus is never, doesn't emerge. It remains dormant and latent. You can read all the books about marriage. You can read all the books about leadership, but the experience is what brings it out. It's not something that's only within, you can't experience it within yourself. Where all the other middas you could. Empathy and compassion and, and fear and awe and discipline and love and all that. Sometimes it's easier to love when you're on your own. <laughs> People who are isolated on mountains are very, very loving. <laughs> they sit on mountains and they meditate and they love the humanity and they love the world, right? It's harder to love when you sometimes interact. But Malchus, by definition, is always about the interaction with the Zulus, with somebody outside of you. The, the one outside of you is... A person could sit in medical school for 25 years and know everything about medicine. Everything. But what happens on the day that this individual is appointed to be the chief cardiologist at NYU Hospital? 
or at Mount Sinai Hospital. What happens? That day, when they put on the robe, and they come in, and now you're in charge. You're in charge. There's hundreds and hundreds of doctors under you, hundreds and ultimately thousands of patients that you're responsible for. You don't learn anything new about medicine that day. What you knew yesterday, you'll know today, but you're a different person. You're a different person. The President of the United States of America, and I'm not talking about which president now. <laughs> when I, <laughs> it's irrelevant. The day you become president, you don't learn anything new. Maybe a few secrets from the CIA. <laughs> what you knew yesterday, you know today. If you were a mensch yesterday, you're a mensch today. If you weren't a mensch yesterday, if you were a mensch yesterday, you're a mensch today too. But the day he's inaugurated as president, he's a different person. He's a different person. What's different? If you were a lawyer before, you say no law today. If you knew foreign affairs before, you know foreign affairs. But you're a different person. What? Malchus. It's not about new knowledge. The, the Zoya says, Lesla megar maklum. Malchus doesn't have anything on its own. It's the moon. It doesn't have anything on its own. But when the moon reflects the light of the sun, it has a special reflection, a special light. Malchus doesn't mean something new happens to me. Fakert. Malchus means that everything that I had inside takes on a new focus, a new sharpness because of my relationship, because of my leadership position. It's the relationship, it's the responsibility, it's the connection that everything I knew before just comes to a focus. It, it, uh, it's crystallized, it's accentuated, it emerges in a certain way. A person could be in military school, West Point, for decades. War breaks out and suddenly this person is the commander-in-chief. It's a different person. He didn't learn anything new, all the techniques and everything, but you're a completely different person. Everything you know is brought to, uh, what's the word? Um, fruition. To fruition, and it, it, it is a razor point. It, 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 it's it's uh, the responsibility of it. The responsibility of it. As Hananda Mensch, there's a Gemara in Menachas. One of the Tanoim said at the end of Menachas, uh, I forgot, one of the Tanoim said, the end of Masech the Menachas, he said like this, if you, would have, uh, if you would have told me in earlier years that you're going to make me a leader, I would tie you down in front of a lion. <laughs> in other words, I would kill you for punishing me this way. Now that I'm up there, if you want to take me down, I take a, a, a kettle, a, a chinik, a big pot of hot water, boiling water, and I pour it on your head. Not that I kill you again. What, what's this? Very deep. It's the experience that brought out Midas Hamalchus. It's a, it's, it's, he's a different person. To take that away is not just you're taking it away, you're taking away covet. We're not talking about that. We're not talking about an ego that's coming because I need your validation. If I need your validation, then I'm not your leader, then you're my leader. <laughs> it's talking about malchus that brings out a different facet in a person that only comes from a relationship with somebody who's not you. You cannot be married to yourself. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people are. That's why you have Masech the Gitin before Masech the Kedushin. <laughs> I once said at a chuppah, I don't know if it went down so well. Why did it say Masech the Gitin before Mekedushin? First you have to be married to get divorced. The answer is you have to divorce yourself. <laughs> you have to divorce yourself to be married to somebody else. If you're married to yourself, meaning there's only me and you're in my fantasy, it's not marriage. The definition of marriage is the, the relationship with the other, and the other is not me. And without that, there's no malchus. You'll say, but, but, but there's the concept, you'll read about it. Not malchus. Malchus is only experienced in the relationship with the one who's outside. Now, what does this mean spiritually? Till malchus is enoid malvada. But Hashem wanted to be a melech. A melech means I'm a spouse. I'm in a relationship. So now I need somebody outside. Now I need somebody else. <laughs> so there's a relationship. So malchus is what creates otherness. Now let's understand. 
By us, when we speak about the Middas, we don't create the people we're having a relationship with. They're there outside of us. We have a relationship. But when you're speaking about the creator of the world, every Middah creates the world that is reflection of that Middah. You understand the difference? So what's Midas HaMalchus? Midas HaMalchus is the Koya HaPoyel Benifel. Midas HaMalchus is the Midah that creates the layer of separateness in the universe. It also gives birth to the next. And that's why it gives birth. That's why it's femininity. Yeah. That's why the Malchus of each world becomes the crown of the next world. That's why Malchus is always seeing, you'll always in Kabbalah, you read us how Malchus, Malchus goes down. What do you mean Malchus goes down? Malchus goes down in, in simple English means it's the divine quality that has to condense itself and manifest itself and conceal itself to create otherness. Because there's a problem here. Einoid Malvade, there's no otherness. <laughs> there's only one way there could be otherness, and that is if there's a tzimtzum, if there's a concealment. Hashem has to limit his energy, compress it, condense it, so that there can be an eye. And that eye is also sustained by the divine energy, but that's the divine energy of Malchus, which creates otherness that can then make a relationship. That's the seventh quality, Malchus. Verstandig? Not really? Huh? Why are you making like this? Okay. So now let's go inside. Focal point, yeah. It brings it to a focal point. That's what I was looking for, yeah. I wasn't looking for that word, but that's a good word. It brings it to a focal point. You don't learn anything new the day, that day, the day of the job. Hopefully not. You should know law before and matter. Whatever it is, you have to know. But it's, 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 it's all brought to the focal point, yeah. And, and the person, there's a mid that comes into a person. You're a different person. Why are you a different person? What, what does it bring out in you? It's not just ego. Because now you have power or your paycheck is big. Yeah, of course, that's all nice and good. It brings out your midas hamalchus that you didn't have before. You're now a melech. And a melech is a different person. Huh? All the rays, all the light. Yeah. So malchus on its own doesn't have anything. In other words... If, if, if you're a pustakeli before you became a leader, you're a pustakeli after you become a leader. Nothing changes. <laughs> but whatever, it, less lamagamaklum, it's makabal from the other middas. Malchus doesn't have its own substance. And yet, it's a completely different realm. Everything else shines through it in a whole different fashion. There's an intensity in it. Crystallized, yeah. But I am Amna Saif Pasha Shaiftim. It says, it's not just Moshe came down at the end of six hours. He didn't come down. Says the Zoyar, what's Pshat ki boy sheish? They made Soif Sheish. The end of six. Six was brought to an end. In other words, they separated between six, which represents the middle pillar represented by Tiferes, which includes six dimensions, and number seven, which represents Malchus. And David Amalek says, seven times a day I praised you, Sheva Bayoim, because he doesn't separate the six from the seven. What does this mean? What does all this mean? It's similar to those who say the philosophy that Hashem abandoned, He let go of the earth. I, there's a whole beautiful world. Yeah, that's why you have astrology. You have mazolos, you have planets, you have koychavim. Mazolos are constellations, planets, galaxies, koychavim are stars. And those are no small things. The mazolos, there's 12 mazolos, they don't have their own power. They're rooted in spiritual powers. There's something called known as the dalad machin shchina, the four camps of the shchina. In the Merkava of Yecheskel, he sees four faces that hold up the chariot, the, the, they are like the wheels, the chariot of God where the Kisah covet sits. You have the face of the lion and the face of the ox and all of them become constellations in the stars. 
Valkane also Tavnis Shoir. That's why they build a sculpture of a shoir, a calf, an eagle. An eagle is a calf, a little baby ox, a little baby bull. Why? For Amru de Taina, Kimitsnaim, Shenevdu. You know what the problem of Egypt was? You know why Egypt lost the war against the Jewish people, against Moshe? Pashat. Ki of the Lamazel Tle. Egypt had a problem. It worshipped the sheep. Egypt invested all of its stocks in the month of Nisan, in the zodiac of Nisan, is, um, is Tle. What is it called in English? The first zodiac. Uh, no, no. The, Arius. Arius. What comes after Arius? Tarus. Tarus is the bull. Tlesher. The problem is Egypt invested in the wrong god. <laughs> the wrong stock. He invested in the wrong stock. Uh, yeah. They used to worship, they used to worship uh, the sheep. That's why Moshe says we can't eat sheep, we can't slaughter sheep because they're going to stone us. Because it's Toyavas Mitzrayim. For us to eat sheep is like, like the, eating gods. Like by the Hindus, they have the holy cow. You don't eat cows because these are gods, right? So that, that was the Bible of the Carbon Pesach. It's brought in Mepharshim that the Carbon Pesach, they had to take a sheep and, and, and prepare it. And this was, a, this was a revolution because this was their god. So this is what allowed Jews to become free. What allowed Jews to become free is that they could take the god of their oppressors and tie it to a bed and then slaughter it. Because the tle was their deity. So the Jew said, Ah, you got to invest in the shoir. You got to invest in the bull. Because the bull is more powerful than the sheep. Why? Because the bull, spiritually, not this is not stam super, because it's rooted in pnei shoir. In pnei shoir, in the face of the ox, which is on the left side of the Merkava. This is the Pshat what it says in Medrash Abba Kisisa. The Medrash says an unbelievable thing. Chet HaEgel happened because of Matan Taira. Because by Matan Taira, Hashem came down with the whole Merkava. He came down with the whole chariot, with all the angels, and they saw the face of the ox on the left. So it says Shoimtin. Shoimtin means they... Uh, they, they, they plucked, they slipped off, they, they like, Extract. huh? Extract. Extracted. They slipped away. They took one of the, one of the, the Pnei Shermer HaSmoil, and then they made him angry with it. Now, what does this mean? So it comes from Matan <laughs> from Matan Hashem came down with the Merkava. They liked the Pnei Shur. They took it, and they turned it into their God. So the Balatani says, V'hainu, hifridu hayichud elyin da'avayahu elikim. What they could not Fathom was the truth of Hashem Hu Elikim. The Yichud Elyon, the ultimate unity of reality, they struggled with. There was a period, a period between Havaya and Elikim. We learned in the Maim of Yadaita. For Yadaita Musk at length, right? There's Havaya, there's Elikim. Essentially, in the Lushan of this Maim, it's Saiv of Kalam and Amamala Kalam. Elikim is also Hashem. But Elikim is the way Hashem is Mitzumtzum. Restricted in the eye of every nivra, or let's put it in other words, midas ha malchus. What's malchus? Malchus is God wants otherness. So malchus creates otherness. How does God create otherness? Only one way. By limiting himself and condensing himself and concealing himself in my eye and your eye. So when I wake up in the morning, I feel me, and my electricity is my own, and you feel you. So you and I are not connected because I am I and you are you. I got my ego to protect and you got your ego to protect. And if you separate that from Havaya, so it's two different worlds. There's the world of six and the world of seven. The world of six means they're not denying God. God exists up there. But as of Hashem Sa'aretz, in the reality of the earth, there's a whole different reality going on. There's an evolution, there's a hierarchy, there's a bureaucracy, there's Machen Mapnei Shur, there's Mazolas, there's Kechavim. God is too big to deal with the intricacies of the world. Malchus and the six midas are now separate. It's two separate things. It's a separate reality. In other words, the relationship between us and Hashem comes through many intermediaries. The calls are also an aid of Rav. This was all made by the aid of Rav, the multitudes of mixtures who mixed into the Jewish people. 
Avol be Yisrael Nem are by the Jewish people. It says Yeshaya Simen Mem Gimel Perik Mem Gimel Zavtoyer of Ayikra Am Zu Yotzarti Li Tehilasi Yisaperu. This nation I have formed for me. They tell my story. They tell my praise. The diuk here is Am Zu Am Zu. Zion Vav. What's the uniqueness of this nation? It's a nation that always connects the seven to the six. Zu! They tell my story down here. Back to the Goy Echod Ba'oritz. In Eretz there's Achtos. Not just in heaven. In Parshas Emre, he speaks about the Karbonis. There's only three types of animals that you could bring. A shoir, an ox, that's the first. That's the like the father of all the sacrifices. A sheep or a goat. Omer Reb Levi says the Medrash, Moshe le Matruna, she yotza la Hashem Ra'im, echad megdoli sarim. Matruna is a queen, there was a queen. And there were rumors, you know, there were WhatsApps going around that she took one of the great sarim, one of the great ministers in the palace, and she developed her own connection with him. Ubada kamelech bidvarim. So the king started to check out what's going on. And he saw that there was no substance. They accused his wife for no reason. And they accused this, this man who was a, a great minister for no reason. So he says, Chuli. The Medrash continues and says, The Medrash says as follows. Ma'asa HaMelech. What did the king do? He made a huge meal. And who did he put at the head table? He put this man, who everybody was accusing, of taking his wife. Why? To show how much trust he has to this person and to his wife. So the Medrash says that the nations of the world always said to the Jews, you made the eagle. In other words, you betrayed your, your, your husband, your God, for, for, for a new guy, for somebody working in the palace, for, for the ox in the Merkava. And he said there's no substance. So he took the shayr and he made the shayr roish l'kala karbonis. He put the shayr at the head table, the ox, the bull, who was the calf, the eagle, who was supposedly the competitor of the king because they ran to the shayr. He makes him the roish. That's why he says shayr roish What's the havana of this? So he says, To prove that by the Jew, the shayr is not the issue. On the contrary. The Jew doesn't separate the shayr from the source. He doesn't detach the shayr from the source. Fakert, the shayr becomes a carbon. He's at the head table. God says, I have nothing against the eagle and the shayr because I know who the Jews are. Amzu This is a maise, it's a fahakta maise, the story. It's not mamish, it's not a substantial story. This is what the Gemara says in Menachas Daphne and Gimel. Another very interesting thing, and it's a pella. It's a pella. You look in the Gemara Menachas Nun Gimel. The Gemara says, the Gemara says as follows. Yavoi Zeh, Zeh should come, that's Moshe. Zeh, Moshe Ha'ish. They call him Zeh. He should take Zois, Torah, Zois HaTorah. So Yavoi Zeh, Moshe, V'yikabal Zois, from who? From Zeh. Hashem is called Zeh, Keli V'anveyu. And he should give it La'amzu. Amzu. We're called Amzu. In the Shira of Parshas B'Shalach, we say Zeh, Keli V'anveyu. And it says Amzu. Right? You remember? Amzu Kanisa. Huh? Ad Yavar Amcha Hashem, Ad Yavar, Amzu Kanisa. So Yavay Zeh, V'yekabal Zois, Mi Zeh, and give it La Amzu. So what's this? Tam, so nice, uh, cute words. So the Al-Balat Hanya Taich is Piddush, Shenikra Amzu, Al Shem Shem Echabrim HaYichud El Yinda Avayahu Elakim. We're called Amzu because we connect the unity of Avayahu Elikim. This is the Amun and Ashgach Pratis. What Ashgach Pratis? Ashgach is divine providence that's detailed. Ashgach Pratis means it's detailed, it's Prat, it's not Klaw. 
Vamazolis vechol tzva shemam ay all the planets all the galaxies all the angels avada but ain't lem shemam shalom ba'atzmon they don't have any authority on their own rakshem shluchi ashpa they are messengers of God's influence kegarzen beyada chotzev boy just like an axe in the hand of the uh, chopper or wielder of the axe do you give the axe credit. When your axe finishes building your sukkah or your home, do you make a special party and give the put the garzan at the head table? No, of course you. Of course you're thankful they have a garzan. Without the garzan, it wouldn't happen. But who do you give credit? Who do you give the paycheck to? Who do you celebrate? Who do you say thank you to? The one who was holding the axe. So I find that there's a lot of things going on in the world. But they have no independent reality. It's all divine energy. It's all just a shluchim of the ashpa. So mele the hashgach is mamish protis. It's individual. It's orchestrated. There's no two realities. The reality of six and the reality of seven. And the reality of seven, which means that which really gets involved in the details of creation, that's detached. That's a whole different reality. Mamali and saiviv, it's all one. It's Hashem u'elikim. It's just God orchestrates and limits the energy in a way that we should be able to receive it. Like we learned the Marshall then of Yadaita about the teacher and the student, you remember? It's not because this teacher wants to conceal himself that he limits his knowledge. It's because he wants to reveal himself in the kalim, in the vessels of the student. And what is more, he puts everything there and after 40 years, the student can get the full intensity of it. We learned that length in the Maim of Yadaita. That's the Nekud. B'meila. V'zeo pirush amzu. His chabrus hamida hashviyus hanikre zayin v'nikre eretz im havav shu etzachayim. Am zu yotzartili. This is the am of zu. They connect the seventh midah, which is called zayin eretz, with the vav, which is the tree of life, v'nikre gamkin shemaim, which is also called heaven. Shahu inyan am shachem erin seiv baruchai de amuda dem tzis. Shamayim represents the communication of infinity through the middle pillar. And, but the Jew, and then there's Eretz, which is Malchus, which is Eitzadas. That's why we say in the Shira, Amzu Kanisa, what's the Zu? It's not just this nation you acquired. That's why you acquired them. This is the uniqueness. The Zu represents the Kanisa. So you have in the same shir, it says Zekeli van Veyu, and then Amzu Kanisa. Does it say twice Zu? Yeah, Nachisa Bechazdecha, I remember. Amzu Gaalta. And here's an interesting thing. The only time in Chumash you have the word Zu is in the shir of Beshalach. You don't have the word Zu anywhere else. It's in the song after Kriyas Yamsuf, which is shortly before the Chet Egel, you have the only time the word Zu, twice. Later you'll have it in Yeshaya. Yeshaya Anavi, as he says, chapter 43, calls us Amzu. But here you have Amzu Ga'alta and Amzu Kanisa. Because the Ge'ula, Ge'ula comes from Zion and Vav together. What's Ge'ula? Ge'ula means you're never a victim. You're always a part of infinity. Kanisa, you acquire this nation to achieve the unity of Hashem Huel Zu. So Yeshaya Anavi says, Amzu Yatsartili. We are created to synthesize the Zuz. What was the churban of the Chet HaEgel? We're investing in the Shor. They took away the Merkava from the source. It's a Merkava, it's God. But they detached. And the detachment of the Merkava from the source, that's ultimately what creates the room for all types of Avayda Zodah, even the lowest form. It doesn't begin with gross idolatry. It begins with something much more, much more subtle. And that's the, the period between absolute oneness and the details of life, the intricacies of life. Which in practical, in practical purposes means that there's certain situations where I'm not connected. You know, there's other things in control. This one is in control, the, the abuser's in control, the trauma's in control, this person's in control, this person, this malach, this koichov, this mazel, I have bad mazel, I have good mazel. But it's all that. In other words, there's, there's, there's disalignment. There's no complete oneness and wholesomeness, which is Hafaya, Hua Lekim, which is the source of all infinite consciousness and the source of redemption and the concept of Yichud, of complete Achtos.
complete achdos. And that's why I'm scattered, va'asafta de gancha, and it's a separation from Eitz Hadas to Eitz Hachayim. Eitz Hadas happens in the world. That's why it says that the Nachash caused the period of Kuchabrichu Shchinte, the same idea. That period, I spoke about the snake, that the snake said that God is your competition and he doesn't want you to, to know as much as he knows and therefore he doesn't want you to eat. That moment where it's God versus me and let's see who's going to win, right? That's right away the period. And that's the problem with the word God. The word God is a, is a product of period. Because when you hear the word God, what do you hear? God, right? God, where is he? He's there, he's there, he's there. Huh? Rabbi Goldstein from Poway, Yisrael Goldstein. So one of his, he said something very moving. I think it was in the White House or so, he said somewhere. His father was Yossel Goldstein. Some of you remember Uncle Yossi. He was the principal of Beis Yaakov in Borough Park. And I think every Jewish rally of kids in Brooklyn from the days of Thomas Jefferson, he ran. So he composed a song. Then Uncle Moshe made it very popular. Hashem is here, Hashem is there, Hashem is truly everywhere. You know the song. Up, up, down, down, right, left, all around, here, there, and everywhere. That's where he can be found, up, up. So he did all the rallies of kids, you know, these Lagboima rallies or whatever they had. So he would always run them. So as kids, we were uh, molded by his songs. So this was his song, and he always made us use our index finger. Where you go, up, up, down, down, right, left, which made it more exciting. So his son, the Chabad Shleich of Pawe, he sang the song that his father taught him. He says, my index finger is missing now. His index finger is missing. So he says, but I want to, I, want to, uh, I would like to inspire all Americans to use their index finger to be able to uh, discover that which I learned from my father. So, uh, so I wrote an article, I think I wrote an article, or I said somewhere that, uh, that he lost his index finger, but he inspired millions of other index fingers to be able to look up and around and all that. So what, what's this idea? This idea is that the person is never detached. There's nothing in the details of your life that are too small for Hashem to be involved in. The moment you say, I'm too small or I'm too detached or I'm in a really bad mood, <laughs> so therefore I'm cut off, that's the source of the Chet Egel. The Chet Egel is you snatch away things. Your Shoymet, even if it's very spiritual, but it starts, it starts the union of Pirud. Yeah. Now will you understand, Rabbeinu Bechaya. What's the Mekoshesh? Mikav Sheish. In other words, he took away, he separated himself from the Kav of Sheish. Sheish is Shemayim. That's Hashem's Midas. That's the Ein Soif. But I'm not, Ein, I'm not Ein Soif. We live in a different world. We live in a world that's not Ein Soif. We live in a world that's concealed. We live in a world that's detached. So a Meili is Mekoshish. So he's looking what's greater, the Eitzachayim or the Eitzadas. So what happens? He's toilish. He uproots. Reality from its source. He uproots reality from its source. What else happens? He's Maivet Arbam is Bershu Sarabim. He believes that everything is happening in a public domain and they're all in the Rabbim of multiplicity and endless diversity, not just diversity, but fragmentation. And therefore, you have to create Ma'amir, which is superficial unity. Says Baham Shakti yesterday's Shir, the three different Malachas of Shabbos, but it's all the same Nakuda. What is it? It's the Eitz Hadas, is not one with the Eitz Hachayim. The Eitz Hadas took over, and that's the death sentence of civilization. The death sentence of humanity is when you unplug, when you unplug it from its source. The death sentence of a person is when you're an isolated, lonely creature, alone in the world, and you have no connections anymore. And now the leaf is going to look for its independence, and it just detached itself from its own source of life. And that's why I go to addiction, or I go to everything I go to, or what a person goes to, because I'm trying, I'm free to die. Right? You know that concept? I detach myself from the tree, so now I'm not connected. I'm free. I'm independent. To do what? To die. So, uh, so that's, the, that's the death sentence of civilization when it alienates itself from its compass, from its source, and of every individual. That's the Mekoshish. And that's what skill is. What's skill? Skill is stoning. So the, it says in the Kodotaira elsewhere, 
There's a physical skill, there's a spiritual skill. What spiritual skill? I become a rock. That's what he says. Nasa liboy keleva evan. You become, I become the stone. Skill is physically a person is stone. Spiritually, I'm the stone. I become a stone, I'll evan. I look at myself and I feel I'm a stone. Unmoved. Not, not, you can't penetrate it. I become a stone. In other words, I, bec- I feel completely detached. You ever see a stone? As it's... <laughs> As it's the lone kan nimtze kan haya, nobody talks to him. They step on him, and and now of course deep down the stone is not a stone either. The stone is also full of chayis. But we're talking about from an external point of view, because deep down behind, be in the in the stone there's a lot of water. Now sometimes you got to hit the stone. Sometimes you got to speak to the stone. That's the difference of Parshas B'Shalach and Parshas Chukas. In B'Shalach you got to hit the stone, and Parshas Chukas this week you have to talk to the stone. But the water is concealed. On the surface, all you see is a stone. So skill is really not a punishment. It's a consequence. It's a consequence of a person becomes stone-like. I'm like a stone. I don't feel. I'm apathetic. I'm indifferent. I'm a rock. Right? There's an expression. I am a rock. A rock feels no pain in an island. A rock feels no pain and an island never cries. Something like that. Right? Rabadan. Huh? Stoned, right? Stoned. Ah? Huh? Leva Evan. Leva Evan. The lave becomes an Evan. Huh? Zesta. A rock feels no pain. Why do I become a rock? Because I don't want to feel pain. It's too much. Why do I feel so much pain? And why do I have to run away from it? Because the pain becomes hopeless. Because there's no yichud. There's no oneness. There's no real oneness. And I saw there's a maimah from the Rebbe Maharash, the son of the Tzamech Sadeh, Tafri Shlamad Gimel, based on this. And he adds that that's Evan. Evan is Aleph Ban. Aleph Ban. Ban is Begematria Behema, 52. It's known in Zoyer as the name of Malchus. There's Ma. And this ban, it's different ways of writing out Yudke Vavke. So you have to bring the Aleph into the ban, and that's the Tikkun for the Mekoshish. You have to bring back the Evan. That's why he says, not just stone him with stones. Spiritually, it means you have to teach him how the Aleph, the oneness, can come into the 52, into the Behemoth, because he looks at himself as a Behemoth, and the Eagle is really separating the Behemoth from the source. That's what the Shirt is, the, the king of the Behemoths. Ban is Begamatria Behema 52. The Hezvah How do you bring the Allah? So that's what the Rebbeinu Bechaya means. The Mekoshish went out Mikav Sheish. There was the Elikim becomes separate from Hashem. Malchus becomes detached. Azav Hashem as Taretz. It says in Svarim, Mohammed, I heard it once, I think, from the Lubavitch Rebbe on Purim. He quoted, it says in Svarim, that Haman said, Yasu aids Gavoya Chamishim Amma, the Yitlu is Mardachai Alav. Chamishim Amma, Mardachai is so tall. Chamishim Amma is 100 feet, 75 feet. Mardachai was 75 feet tall. What do you need an aids Chamishim Amma? So Haman didn't know, of course, that he was preparing his own tree and all of his 10 children. So they needed the space. But when he was planning it, right, he wasn't planning, he and his 10 sons. What's, who makes a gala of Chamisha Mama? Yeah. So there's a beautiful taich. The Lubavitch Rebbe once said on Purim. The Gemara says about Basra, the Chamisha Mama is considered outside of our domain. It's, it's like 50 Amas is like a different Rishus. It's a Negea to a Shoivach. When you have a, a, a what is it called? A, a, sh- a dove coat, right? So if you have uh, if you have birds that are within chamishim ama of a person's dove coat, you're not allowed to take them because they're private, huh? Twenty amas. No, this is a shayvach. It belongs because the birds fly away. I, it's, a, it's it's almost a hundred feet. Yeah, that's what birds do. They don't stay right near the dove coat. But once it's higher than chamishim ama, now it's uh, it's a free, it's a free world. You can take it. So the Gemara says, Boy Rabirmi, Rabirmi asked, what happens if one foot of the bird is within Chamishamama and one foot is outside of Chamishamama? So Afkul Bemidra, they threw him out of the base madrash. That's what it says. They threw the Birmi out of the base madrash. You hear the question? One foot in fifty hamas, one foot outside, or you ought to take the bird. Okay, huh? It says Afkul Mabe Madrash. They 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 sent him out for this. You have to understand exactly what the story means, but that's not for now. 
It's another Indian, another Shia. So Hamisha Mama is a Psazai, you're, you're beyond. Haman said like this, we respect Mardechai very much. We love Mardechai, but he belongs above Hamisha Mama. You take his picture, you put it up, you make a big portrait, you put on, and you, you look at it and you say, Alechayim once a year. But is the Balabas. You want to know how to live this life? You don't go to Mordechai. Mordechai is an inspiration. He's a very good inspiration. He has a Langa Vice aboard, a Hadras Ponim. He belongs up on the tree. Everybody could look up and say, Psst. Ah. That's what Haman says. That's where Mordechai belongs. In the real world, that's not, that's not Mordechai. That's the Nekudah of the Pirut, the separation. And the emesis, the Einoid Mulvadai, that the Mekoshish had to learn was, the, the Chiddush of Shabbos is, right, that the Yesh and the Ayin are, are, are completely one. Yeah. Be'ezer Hashem. Story the guy comes it's a very complicated issue. In, 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 in Zohar, there seems to be a contradiction. In one place it says, in one place it says, Malchus, Zeirampin, and Atik. In another place it says, Malchus, Atik, Zeirampin. The Arizal's Nusach is like the second that I just said, that it's, uh, like you said, at night is Malchus, Chakal Tapuch in Kaddishin, and the morning is Atika, and, and, and in the afternoon is Ah. Oh. So the Priyat Chaim, the Arizal says, that obviously Mincha is the highest. It's the highest. So he says what it means is, it's really not a contradiction, because what he means by Mincha is that Ze'er Ampin is Oila all the way to Atik. In other words, Shabbos day, Atik is revealed. But by Mincha, even Ze'er Ampin becomes one with Atik. That, that's what he says. That, so it's actually a deeper level. So there's a reconciliation between the two. Rebbe Zriel asked me the question yesterday in the morning. So in the Shir that he wrote up, he writes up the Shir every day and posted on the yeshiva.net, I added a whole piece from a mimer of the Rashab. The Rebbe Rashab has a whole mimer, Tofri Shayim Beis, where he explains the reconciliation. So I just quoted it and I put it in there because I knew people will have the question. So you could take a look over there. It's a little explained somewhat. It's an interesting thing. The idea is that Friday night is the... No, 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 you did it right. You did it right. You did it right. No, you did it 100% right. There's a contradiction in Zayar, and it's explored at length. In, in, in Chabad Chassidus, it's explored at length. Already by the Arizal. And the reconciliation is that it's not a real contradiction. Because... It's very illogical also to say that from Shabbos morning you go down to Shabbos afternoon. Shabbos afternoon is considered much higher. So it's considered Eitz Hadas, Eitz Hachayim, and then the unity of both of them, which comes from a place that transcends both, which is called Ayin. And also, there is all the, the, the order between the Kalta Pichin Kaddishin, Zeyron, and the Kaddishin, all three are different. Yes. Yes, sure yes, yes, of course. Different. Of course. Yeah. I was always struggling with this. Why there is a Yeah, yeah, yeah. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.